again, booktube. Thanks for stopping by my channel. I'm a frequent traveler who loves going to new bookstores, but I still think every book lover has a comfort bookstore, a place that they know by heart, their safe space, and that they go to for a book haul. I'm no different, so over spring break, I spent a lot of time in my comfort Barnes & Noble in the Midwest. I've been coming to this Barnes & Noble since elementary school, and I used to hang out in the cute frog and toad themed kids section, but now I can walk all of the aisles with my eyes closed. I always have a ton of books on my TBR, but lately I've been struggling to read any high fantasy or sci-fi. There's a lot going on in my life with school and graduation right now, so lately I've been drawn to Japanese literature and magical realism. I'm really feeling grounded by books that feel real, but just a little bold and whimsical, which is kind of the way my life feels right now. I actually just recently finished a book called Heaven by Mieko Kawakami. It's an absolutely beautiful book. Uh, I highly recommend. I gave it five stars. And it's about two outcasts in middle school who are bullied and end up becoming friends with each other. One author that I recently discovered is Kurt Vonnegut Jr. Most people know him from his novel Slaughterhouse-Five, which I've actually yet to read. My first book by Vonnegut was Breakfast of Champions, which I can only describe as absolutely ridiculous. It includes illustrations and doodles by Vonnegut himself, and the book's sense of humor is somehow both nonsensical and terrifyingly aware. A lot of college kids really love Kurt Vonnegut, and I heard his name many times on my own campus before I decided to read Breakfast of Champions for myself. And I I think it's because Gen Z really relates to his dark sense of humor. I wasn't sure about picking up Slaughterhouse Five um, during this trip just because I want to kind of build up to it, so I picked up Cat's Cradle instead. Sally Rooney is another one of my favorite authors right now. I absolutely love Normal People. It's actually my number one recommendation to anyone who is graduating high school and starting their freshman year of college soon. Normal People paints a shockingly accurate portrait of college and the interactions that you might see while you're there. I also finished Sally Rooney's first novel, Conversations with Friends, a few months ago. I have honestly never seen characters that are as well-rounded as hers, and I really wanted to pick up her newest book on this trip. It's called Beautiful World, Where Are You? I couldn't find it at first and was super upset, but luckily found a pretty hardcover version up front in the sale section. I definitely would have paid full price for it, though. There was also this cute blind date with a book display near the front. I've wanted to try one of these for forever, and I finally gave in. Each wrapped book was decorated with these cute little flowers, and apparently the one I picked is a twisty modern day fairy tale, supernatural mystery, and includes missing memories and a missing sister. I feel like it could be YA, and I am so excited to open it on camera with you later. Even though I'm branching out from YA, my favorite section in this store will forever be the YA section. Barnes & Noble has really been embracing book talk trends and showing off those stunning YA fantasy covers. There's so many books at this table that are on my TBR right now, especially These Violent Delights and The Priory of the Orange Tree. I actually got to meet Chloe Gong virtually when she came to my school, and I've been waiting to read These Violent Delights forever, but I've been waiting until I can get my hands on the prettiest edition I can find. And yes, this whole aisle is full of YA books. It's funny to still see YA books that I read before I was even in high school, like the Divergent and Hunger Games series, but I think those are just classics to YA aficionados at this point. We've got some contemporary YA over here, which I have not delved into much and should definitely read more of. I finally read Nicola Yoon's The Sun is Also a Star for a class recently, but for some reason I couldn't really get into it and I liked everything, everything better. And of course, over here we have the incredible Leigh Bardugo, and I'm so proud to say I own every single one of these books and editions, plus some. My Leigh Bardugo collection is probably my most complete one so far. And before we head home, here's the manga section. I thought I'd definitely check out this section because someone recently commented on one of my Instagram posts and asked me to talk a little bit about the manga I read and like. I'll probably make a separate video on that if people are interested, but for now, let's look at some of my favorite manga in this store. Here we have The Promised Neverland, which is a terrifying and heart-wrenching sci-fi and thriller series about children who must escape a sinister orphanage. Whatever you think will happen to the cute children on these gorgeous covers, it's probably worse. 
This series is so gripping and I highly recommend. Definitely watch the anime too. Next up, we have the first manga I ever read and anime I watched, not counting Pokemon. This is Soul Eater, a series about humans who morph into weapons and the meisters that wield them who must fight and collect the souls of evil people. This series is near and dear to my heart with a lovable cast of characters and also touches on some important themes about mental health. This series was first published in the early 2000s but seems to be making a comeback and these new hardcovers are so cool. This next one is Ancient Magus Bride, which I actually haven't read, but I love the anime. If you like high fantasy, ancient magic, witchy cottagecore things, and tall mysterious monster mages, then hopefully that is all I need to say to convince you. I don't know if you can tell, but I was super distracted by Alice in Borderland, which is one of my favorite shows on Netflix and is apparently also a manga. I gave the blurb a quick read and flipped through some of the art, and it seems like the plot and characters are a little different from the live action show. I do know that the incredible acting and imagery of the show had me emotionally messed up for days when I watched it and I'm eagerly awaiting season two. Unpopular opinion, but Alice in Borderland is better than Squid Game. And for those who don't know, Alice in Borderland is a dystopian sci-fi similar to Squid Game that involves disturbing games in which people's lives and psychological states are put at stake. Finally, last but not least, actually this one is the best, we have my and everyone's current obsession, Jujutsu Kaisen. You can see volume 4 is missing and it features my favorite character, Gojo, so if I ever find it in a store, I might actually cry. JJK is getting a lot of attention right now, and for good reason. It's about sorcerers who fight to defeat cursed spirits, and it's got epic battles, an intricate magic system, and characters who are just way, way too pretty. Okay, I'm back home and ready to meet my blind book date. Also, since I just finished gushing about my love for Gojo, I figured I would show off this little Gojo figurine that I bought a few days ago at GameStop. He is such a cutie with his spiky white hair and his teeny tiny blindfold. I'm also in the middle of packing up my beautiful bookshelves and transporting them to New York with me a few books at a time. I almost don't want to show you what the shelves look like anymore because it's so sad. Here they are. It honestly looks so terrible and bare and I already miss the way they used to look, but I'm trying to look at this as a new opportunity to rearrange my bookshelves and experiment with the way that I set up my books. I have packed almost half of my books and unhauled a lot to little free libraries, but don't worry because I have even more books in New York that you guys haven't even seen yet, so I'm so excited to do a new bookshelf setup and tour in a few months. Okay, now the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's find out what book I'll be going on a date with and if I think it's going to work out between us. So it looks like the book I got is called House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. I've never heard of this one before, but it definitely looks like something I'll like. This cover is beautiful and creepy at the same time. I love how the character is covered in flowers, but there's also some kind of nectar that kind of looks like blood dripping down her face, and there's a bunch of bugs crawling on her face. It's just ugh, ugh, creepy, but also beautiful and ethereal in a weird way. This book is indeed young adult, as I predicted, so I guess you can just call me the book whisperer. The main character is 17, and from reading the synopsis, the vibes kind of remind me of the Folk of the Air series by Holly black and i absolutely love that series so i'm definitely going to give this one a go and with that that is all i have for you guys today i know this tour was shorter than my usual videos but summer is coming up which means that i will have more free time to travel and film i'll definitely be doing more new york city bookstore tours so please keep an eye out for those if you like those in the meantime as always let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see more of there are any specific book genres you want me to review or talk about and also just what books you've been obsessed with lately don't forget to subscribe and follow me on instagram too if you want to chat thank you all for watching and have a very peaceful week